Hello once again and welcome to the Amalgamated with Christ Church where the purpose of him remains the same. To bring people back into fellowship with God through Jesus Christ. Turn the Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And let's look at verse 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and let's look at verse 16. It says, Rejoice always. Go to 17 as well. Pray without ceasing. I guess 18. In everything. In everything. Give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 16 to 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ for you. So, um, you know, why should Christians pray? That's a question that Minister Vanessa proposed. She asked that question. Why should Christians pray? Then it dawned on me that many Christians really do not know why they should pray or how to pray. What time to pray? Or uh, what's the length of time for prayer? Why should Christians pray? If you want to be very... If you want to look at the, the simple situation, it is simple. Because scripture mandates this. It is mandatory for all Christians to pray. We just read the scripture. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. That's verse 17. We were mandated to pray. As a child of God, we must pray. So what is really prayer? What is praying? When we speak about prayer, when we talk about to pray... Pray is a verb, meaning it's what you do. It's an action word. So when you say pray, we're talking about a dialogue with God. And that's the reason it's an action word. It's a verb. Now, prior, you pray, but then the prior is what you often up. That's the dialogue that you have with God. So pray, the verb prior is the noun. Okay? So why should Christian pray? Why should you engage in this activity? Yes, it is. And the scripture mandates. The scripture mandates that we as children of God, we ought to pray. We just read the portion of scripture right there. But unfortunately... Many people, many people in Christendom, they don't believe this. They don't live like this. Meaning they have no dialogue with God, but they go around and they claim to be Christians. And they never yet speak to Jesus. They never yet pray to the Father. Right? So are you truly a Christian? I don't know. Because every one of us who are in the body of Christ... We must dialogue with God. When we speak about prayer and about praying, again, we're talking about dialogue. The dialogue that is necessary with God. You cannot belong to a body and you do not dialogue. It's like you're, you're on the job or it's like you live in your house, but you do not talk to anyone that's within the house. You're saying, but what if I can't speak? Well, there is sign language in your house. The difference with God is that you, you, do, you do not have to, when we talk about praying, we're not talking about, you do not have to open your mouth and shout out and scream. You can pray within and God still hear your prayer. That's a beautiful thing about the dialogue that you, you, that you have with God. But we got to be very careful when we talk about dialoguing with God. Because you have many false gods. And you have people that pray to God, 
but they are not praying to the true and living God. Even Christians, even Christians, they are not praying to the true and living God. What do you mean, preacher? It's even in the scriptures. It's even in the scriptures that sometimes when people say, God, are they praying to the true and living God? Are they praying to some other gods? Go back in the Old Testament. Look in 2 Kings 17 and verse 33. They fear the Lord, yet serve their own gods according to the rituals of the nations from among whom they were carried away. You see that? The children of Israel, they knew the true and living God. But what happened? Though they fear God, guess what? They also serve, the scriptures say, yet serve their own gods. So you can be a child of God. You can be a Christian. And instead of praying or worshiping or serving the true and living God only, guess what? You are also praying to. You are also praying to or dialoguing with other gods. Now, when you really look at it, look at it like this. When I say dialoguing with other gods, people are saying, but you know what? We're not bowing down on our knees and we're not saying, oh, my car, please bless me. Give me that. Although some people go out and they really do pray for their, pray to their car, you know. Car, give me 50 more miles. They pray to their car. But... Some people may say something jokingly, but seriously, by your action, by your action, though you may not be really bowing down or kneeling down, you can be praying to other gods than the true and living God. And it should not be because the scripture tells us that we should only serve one true God. Hero Israel, it's, it's the same is is applicable to us so that the Lord thy God is one. Worship no other God, bow down to no other God, just the one and true living God. So you have to be careful when we talk about praying. So we ask the question again, why should Christians pray? And the first thing that you should know is that prayer was mandated by the scripture as long as you're a child of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 again, verse 16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, verse 17 and 18, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God, this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So why do you pray? Because the scripture said so. The scripture says pray without ceasing. Does that mean an uninterrupted vigil? Does that mean you kneel down 24 sevens or you do whatever you want to do 24 sevens without, without non-stop? When the scripture says pray without ceasing, it essentially saying that you must have an established prior life. That's it. Some people may get trivial and say, Preacher, do you mean as I come off the bed, I should pray before I put my, sh my shoe on? Well, some of us ought to pray before we put our shoe on because not many people have the, have the ability to put their own shoe on. Do I mean I, I, you should pray before I put my pants on? Yes, because some people have no legs. So whether or not, whether or not, well, that, that's not the question. It is a prior life. It's an established prior life. That's what we're talking about. So when the scripture says pray without ceasing, it is saying that we must have a prior life. All Christians must have a dialogue with the true and living God. You cannot be a follower of Jesus Christ unless you have a dialogue with him. You cannot be a child of God. You cannot be a Christian, but yet still you do not pray. Prayer is not optional for the Christian. Prayer is a must. Without prayer, there is no communication with God. Again, let me say this. Prayer is not optional Drinking a certain beverage may be optional to you, but when you're talking, when you, when you talk about prayer and praying, that's not optional to the Christian. It is mandatory for us to dialogue with God. 
Because that is the only way that you communicate with God. So if you do not pray, it simply means that you do not have any communication with God. If you do not pray, I must say to you, you are not a Christian. Because you cannot be a Christian and you have no communication with the source. Remember, Christians are followers of Jesus Christ. And how can you be a follower of Christ if you have no communication, you have no dialogue with him? So why should Christians pray? Why should Christians pray? And for us to be a Christian, for us to say that we're a child of God and we follow after Jesus Christ, we love Jesus and we want to do what Jesus do, but yet still we do not want to pray. Because there are a variety of reasons, and we'll get into that, while many people do not pray. But I say to you, even Jesus Christ, when he was here on earth, the man, Christ Jesus, he prayed also to his Father in heaven. And if Jesus prayed to his Father in heaven, why is it that we, who are his followers, decide that, we should not pray. And Jesus Christ also instruct us to pray. John 14 verse 13. And whatever you ask in my name. That I will do. That the father may glorify in the son. If you ask verse 14. If you ask anything in my name. I will do it. The problem we're having is that. Many people do not ask for anything. But they're just going through life. Expecting to get something. They don't ask. They say, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you, I don't have to ask. God should know what I, what I want. But God gives you free will. God is not going to force anything on you. God knows what's best for you. That's the reason you have the perfect will of God and you have the permissive will of God. For example, if you decide that you want to buy this car, but God do not really want you to buy this car. God has something else in store for you. But you say, but I work hard. I like this red car and I'm going to buy this red car. You didn't steal it. You didn't steal your money. You're you not covetous. You're not doing anything wrong. You just go ahead and you buy your own red car. And God said, okay. I was going to give you something with all the luxury, with all this stuff. I was going to give you something with a little extra so you can use it for economic purposes. But you went ahead and you do what you want to do. Okay. So I'm saying even Christ himself, pray, himself he, he did pray. He did pray. When you pray to God, what is it that you're doing? When you pray to God, based on the scripture that we have just read, you are doing two things. The first thing you're doing, you are, you're doing what? You're seeking his will. So when you pray to God... You seek his will, and when you pray to God, you're saying to God that, God, I am submitting to your authority. So why should Christian pray? We're looking at the various reasons. When you pray, you want the will of God. You're seeking the will of God. When you pray, you're submitting to the authority of God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, it says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So why is it that Christians should pray? You pray because you are seeking the will of God. You want the, you want the perfect will of God. And you also are submitting to the authority of God. You see, every Christian must understand that they are a slave unto righteousness. And if you are a slave unto righteousness, you should be able to, or you should be willing to, do the will of your master. We see, the problem is many of us do not like to be, we, we want to be a Christian, but we do not want to be a slave unto righteousness. And so because we do not want to be a slave unto righteousness, we do not want to submit because mm -mm, I ain't submitting to no one. You know many Christians do not want to submit to God. They want to be Christians but they do not want to submit to God. And therefore I say that if you do not pray, you are not seeking the will of God or you are not showing submission to him. And if you are not seeking his will and if you are not submissive to him, then you cannot be a Christian. So why should Christians pray? 
We pray because we want to seek the will of God for our life and we want to submit to his authority. We want to seek his will and we want to submit to his authority. Christian pray. Christians should pray understanding that one, it is mandatory. Two, because you're seeking God's will. Three, because you want to submit to his authority. If you do not understand, and if you're not following the scriptures, because it makes no sense to you, then you're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. Because if something is mandatory, it's not optional. It's not optional. You cannot say that, oh, you know what, I'm a, I, I want to be a Christian, but I just don't like the prior thing. And so many Christians are very terrified to pray. We're going to get into that. People say that we, 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 uh, we, I don't like to pray because I don't know how to pray. And people will find all sort of excuses, but we're going to go into that. And I say once again, Christians pray to seek God's will and to show submission to his authority. We just showed you two portions of scripture. John 14 verse 13 and 1 John 5 and verse 14. Christians must pray. You cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a Christian and refuse to pray. One of the most disturbing things that I've seen is a Pew report from 2021. It's a research center, pre-research center. And it said that 68% of Christians pray at least daily. Then it says 17% of Christians pray at least weekly. Then it says 5% of Christians pray monthly. Then it says 9% of Christians said that they seldomly pray or never. And 1% don't know. Let me tell you this, my brothers and sisters. This should have been a hundred percent. You cannot have Christians, and the research is saying 68 pray at least daily. Okay, that's very good. But then 17 percent weekly. Okay, then five percent monthly, nine percent seldom or never. And 1% don't even know if they pray. Now, my brothers and sisters, this is worrying because the body of Christ must have a 100% prior life. A 100% prior life. You see, we spend more time doing everything else except praying. We spend more time being nosy Except praying. We spend more time on social media. We spend more time having fun. And we don't pray. We don't communicate with the, with the creator. We don't communicate the one who we declare allegiance to. And so you can never be a child of God. Remember, praying is not optional if you're a Christian. Praying is mandatory. And when you pray... You are seeking the will of God. When you are praying, you are showing submission to his authority. So you are saying, but preacher, prayer is hard. No, prayer is not hard. What is the definition of prayer? What did I say it is? I said it is a dialogue. So just like how you speak to your friend, just like how you speak to your children, just like how you speak to your boss, that's the way you can speak to God. You don't need anyone to stand between you and God because Christ is already there doing that. Christ is there doing that for us, standing or sitting. He's at the right hand of God, making intercession for us. That's what Christ is doing. So you do not have to go through some third party. You do not have to pick up the phone and call the pastor and say, Pastor, can you pray that it reads the ear of God? No. We're going to the prayer for righteous man avails much. But you have the authority once you're a child of God to pray because it's a dialogue. It's a dialogue with God. Now, there is no formula to prayer. 
There is no formula to prior. There is no formula to prior. No formula to prior. Jesus instruct us how to pray. There is no man-made formula. If you go to Matthew chapter 6, the famous prayer that everybody recites is the hour for the prayer. Let's look at this prayer, Matthew chapter 6. It starts from uh, verse 9. Jesus taught them also, In this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Hold up. Remember we said that when you pray, you're seeking his will, but listen. Your will be done on earth as it's in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. Pray in this way. Jesus Christ was saying, pray in this way. Look at it. It says, in this manner. You pray in this manner. Pray in this way. It simply means that prayer is a, our prayer must be a pattern and not recitation. Now you're saying, it's, oh, so preacher, don't that mean I should not recite a prayer? Sure, you can recite a prayer, but we'll get into that. We'll get into that. Prayer is a pattern. You build muscles, praying muscles when you know how to pray. And the portion of scripture that we just read, this Our Father prayer, it is simple. It is broken up. Praying this way. Pray in this pattern. Look at verse 9 to 10. Verse 9 to 10 focuses on God's program. And then verse 11 to 13 Focus on what? Your needs. So you don't just go in prayer and just say, big man upstairs, I'm talking to you. You don't go to the judge or you don't go to your boss and say, hey, hey I'm talking to you. You show respect. So pray in this way. Look at the pattern. You always show respect to God. Oh, Father in heaven, we thank you for today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, etc., etc. Now, sometimes your prayer may be in urgency. But in all things, you must remember that you must fear God, meaning you must reverence God. So you always go with respect to God. But some people want to go straight to their program. God, give me $50 right now. God, give me a husband right now. I just, you, you don't even say, you don't even say God, you just say, you just need to say, gimme, 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 gimme. You focus it on you and you and you and you and you. Remember that through prayer you are also worshiping. You're also worshiping in prayer. So prayer in this way is showing us a pattern rather than recitation. So as a child of God, you must develop a pattern that reverence God. Always reverence God before you put forth your needs. Because God is the supreme being. And if you do not show respect to the supreme being, how do you want to get from him? How do you want to get from him? You don't just, put, you don't just go to work and just barge in on your supervisor. Or just kick open your manager's door. You make an appointment. When you want to get a raise, what do you do? You submit a request or you do, and you, you're humble and you, you work and you, you go to work on time and you're very, you, 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 you step cautiously, you tippy toe and you can't shout and you can't do that because you're reverencing. Because you want your needs to be met. It's the same approach when you pray. Pray in this way. You begin your prayer by acknowledging God. Acknowledging God before you get to your need. Because you know, many of us are praying incorrectly. You're saying, well, I wonder why nothing is happening to me. I wonder why my prayers aren't being answered. You're praying incorrectly. Are you acknowledging God? Are you worshiping God? Are you just getting straight to the meat of the matter? You say, well, preacher, what, is a, what if it's an emergency? Okay, fine. 
A lot of times people go in emergency, people may have a traffic accident or people may, people may be subjected to something horrendous and the first thing comes out of the mouth, Jesus help me. They're referencing God because you develop that pattern. You don't just shout out, help me. Who are you shouting out to? Help me. Who, who are you shouting out to? So if it's even if in an emergency, guess what? You must, must show respect and reverence. Who are you praying to? Who are you praying to? And so I'm saying, prayer, prayer is necessary. It's mandatory. It's mandatory. And so if prayer is mandatory, as we saw in the scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. And we saw also that when you pray, you're seeking the will of God. And you're, and you're submitting to his authority, as we see in John 14, 13 and 1 John 5 and 14. If all that is true, then why is it that some Christians do not pray when we should pray? We must pray. We have to pray. Why is it that some Christians do not pray? Why is it that the Pew report showed that 68% of Christians said that they pray only what? Weekly. 17% says, no, 68% say they pray at least daily. 17% say weekly. 5% um, monthly. 9% seldom or never. And 1% they don't know if they pray. Why is it? Why is it that number so anemic? Yes, and but pastor, how is it anemic if it's 68% of people who pray? Well? It's anemic because 100% of people should be praying every day. Remember, it's God you're talking about. And so why is it that some people don't pray? Well, let's get into that. Some people pray and some of us may be guilty. Some people don't pray because we feel that you know what? I'm not going to pray because my prayer don't make a difference. Have you ever said that before? I am not praying about anything because my prayer do not make a difference. They're going to do whatever they want to do regardless of how much I pray. So I'm not wasting one prayer on them because it don't make a difference. I'm saying that is a lie. The only way your prayer does not make a difference is unless you are not a righteous person. If you are a righteous person, if you are in good standing with God, you do not have to worry about praying a prayer of repentance. You can go ask anything in my name. Ask. Ask for it. Ask for it. Now, you do not know when it may happen. But as long as you are in righteous standing with God, your prayer will always make a difference. So don't say, I'm not going to pray because my prayer don't make a difference. Listen to this. James chapter 5, verse 16. It says, confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. Okay. Full stop. Then it goes on to say a new sentence. Be effective Fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So how can you say that I'm, I'm not going to pray because, because when I pray, don't make a difference? Yes, your prayer makes a difference. Your prayer makes a difference. Your prayer do make a difference. So do not believe that uh, uh, I'm too. I'm. I'm. I'm just a nobody. Probably your prayer is a prayer that is needed to break some barriers. Probably your prayer is the one prayer that is needed to break a generational curse. Probably your prayer is a prayer that is needed to get you out of a situation. Probably your prayer is a prayer that is needed to get your family straight. Probably your prayer is a prayer that is needed to get your finances straight. So how is it that you're saying that your prayer don't make a difference so, you, so, so, so you're not going to pray? So if anyone believe that, ah, I don't pray because my prayer don't make a difference, well, I'm saying to you, it's not true. The scripture already show you that as long as you're a righteous person, your prayer avails much. Some people don't pray because they believe that when they pray, they must pray a certain way. A certain style. They must pray in a certain tone. 
They must pray, oh Lord, my God, my Father. And they just have to change their accent. Like me, you can hear my accent pouring out through here. That's how I pray. That's how I speak. That's how I dialogue. Some people say, oh, I, I, I got to play like, uh, like I'm an Englishman or uh, like uh, I'm so and so and so. I'm so and so and so. No, you pray, just pray. You don't need to pray in a certain way. Oh, uh, when, when I'm going to pray, if, if you do not have a prayer shawl, you can't pray. That's rubbish. That's garbage. That's garbage. When um, Peter when, and Paul, when they were all in prison, they did not have no prayer shawl to pray. If you're thrown, and thrown in jail and you're locked away in jail, you don't, have no, you don't have nothing. What if you're just in your jail clothes? Are you not going to pray? You do not need to pray a certain way. Oh, I have to pray at a certain time. You do not need a certain time to pray. The scripture did not mandate a certain time to pray. Yes, it's okay if you develop a habit. If you want to get up at 5 a.m. each day and you want to pray at 5 a.m. each day, then that's perfectly fine. But the scripture did not say, aside from what Jesus said, Pray in this manner, meaning it's a pattern, not a recitation, meaning it's a pattern, not saying, you know what, I have to get my favorite, I have to get my cup of coffee right next to me, I have to put on my favorite music, I have to turn my lights down low, I have to do all of that before I pray. No, 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 no. And that's the reason it's very bothering, because you are some religious people. They can't pray, for example, like a lot of the Catholic people, they can't pray unless they're rolling their rosary beads, which is just saying they, can, they should meditate. Oh, no, I can't find my rosary, so I can't pray. Okay, uh, there we go. There we go. There is no certain way you are to pray. There is no certain way you are to pray. Because if you're in a situation, whatever situation you're in, your situation do not care how you structure your prior life at home. Your situation is going to determine the fervency of your prior. Are you going to start praying right then and there? Are you going to start? What if it's an emergency and you have to run out in your sleeping clothes? You've been persecuted. Aren't you going to pray? Are you going to say, you know what? I have to get, I have to get, I have to get my, my jacket on first. I have to get my Sunday clothes on first before I start to pray. That's garbage. You must pray because if you do not pray, it simply means that you are not dialoguing with God. And you have to, you have to pray to show that there is a dialogue with God. You have to pray. Again, why should Christians pray? Why should Christians pray? Why should Christians pray? You pray because you want God. You can pray to God, I should say, to discern motives and overcome them. You can pray because you want to discern the motive of someone. You want to discern what is going on. You see, many of us, many of us, we can't discern anything because we do not pray. You're going to go into a situation and you don't pray. You don't ask God anything. You just, you just, you just, you just, you just like, mm. you, 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 you're going. You want to discern motives and you want to overcome evil. You want to overcome evil. An example of that in the scripture is in Matthew 17, Matthew 17, when the man brought his epileptic son to Christ. And he explained to Christ what was happening. And um, the man said in verse 16, So I bought him, I bought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. And then Jesus answered and said in verse 17, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuke. Bottom line, the enemy came out. Then, if you look at verse 20, 
So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you say to the mountain, move, 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 and it will move, right? Then verse 21, however, this kind does not go out except by fasting and prayer. You focus, focus 19 to 21. You pray to discern motives and you pray to overcome situation. And sometimes you got to add a little fasting to the prior. Sometimes you got to add a little fasting to the prior. Okay? You pray also to overcome temptation. Why should Christians pray? Christians, you pray because you want to overcome temptation. Many of you are always falling into temptation because you have no prior life. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 26, verse 41, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So you pray to overcome temptation. You pray to overcome temptation. Right? Why should Christians pray? Christians should pray because they want to overcome temptation. Knowing that they live in this fallen world. This fallen world is filled with everything to draw you away. And unless you pray, you will not be able to stand. And the enemy is going to come at you. The enemy is going to throw everything at you to weaken you. And unless you are praying, unless you have dialogue with God... You will not be able to overcome. You pray also to strengthen your spiritual life. You pray to strengthen your spiritual life. Many Christians today are weak and anemic. Because, come on, come on, child. Come on, kids. Come on. Come on. Many Christians today, they fail because they are weak and anemic. Because your spiritual life is poor. It says right here, listen to this. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You pray because you want to be strong spiritually. You can't be strong in things of God without praying to God. You can't be strong without praying to God. You pray always. Why should Christians pray? Because you want, again, you want to get the perfect will of God. So that's the reason you must pray before you engage in any major decision making. You can't get up and make a life changing decision without praying. It's so funny. When we're going to, when we're going to do certain things, we don't seek God. Because we're saying, God, God, God already know my heart. No. That's flimsy. God already know my heart, so I, 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 I'm not going to pray. You know what? Even Jesus himself, as I said, before Jesus chose the 12 apostles, Jesus prayed about it. If you look in Luke 6, verse 12, it says, And it came to pass... In those days that he went out to the mountain to pray. And continued all night in prayer to God. And listen to this, verse 13. And when it was day, he called his disciples to himself. And from them he chose twelve whom he called or whom he named apostles. I wonder if you see what is happening here. Jesus as much as 70 disciples. The scripture said that. He said, oh yeah, okay, let's look, let's look where we where had 70. He had 70 disciples, right? He had 70, meaning a disciple is a follower, right? And someone that received the teaching. So he had 70 disciples. Okay, look at Luke, Luke 10, right? 
Look at Luke 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also. And then he sent them out two by two, two by etc. That said, he, he, uh, he, yes, he appointed disciples. But before he went down to the nucleus, the 12, the apostles, the people whom he wanted to be with him in close proximity, the people who he was given, the, he personally was given the great commission to what did he do? He prayed before. He had 70. Jesus could probably walk out and say, Peter, James, John, Matthias, come on over here. Philip, oh yeah, I see you, I see you, John. Come over here. Jesus could have done that. But what did Jesus do? Jesus prayed all night. And then the next day, he chose from the disciples 12 whom he called apostles gave them the office of apostleship so i don't know it, it, that, that that's a strange thing now i don't know how come you have so much apostles today and they were never even in the disciples <laughs> they were never even in the disciples that were with jesus okay but anyway that's an, an, another thing okay the apostles with him were Chosen by him after he prayed and from the set, from the disciples, he chose the apostles. So this is saying that we should pray before we make life-changing decisions. Jesus is God, but yet still Jesus went and Jesus prayed. So why, why is it that you decided, oh, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move from here. And I'm going to California, but I'm not praying about such a major decision. I'm going to move away, but I'm not praying. I'm going to change the job, but I am, I am not praying. Someone come and they offer me five cents more an hour. I'm going to take it. I am not praying. That's what a lot of people do. A lot of people never care. They don't pray. They just leave. They're just gone. They said, okay, well then, all right then. You know what? I'm in this ministry, but guess what? My son now has his little, his little ministry in his garage. I'm in this ministry for 50 years. Nobody do me anything. The ministry is solid. It's going fine. It's still viable. It did not dissolve, but I'm going to leave because I'm going in there with my son. You don't pray about it. You say, but he's my son. You didn't pray about that. You just, you just get up and you just leave. You can't make major decisions. And you do not pray. You do not pray. It's very different when you have been praying about the situation. God knows you have been praying about it. You have been travailing about it. God already knows that you put it to him. And then you walk down the street and then suddenly... Everything that you were praying for, everything, it came, boom, right there. And you know what? Sometimes you have to say, God, is it really from you? Because you can have fake giving, you can have camouflage stuff. So you better make sure it's true. So you pray before you make major decisions. Okay? Why should Christians pray? Because when we do not pray, we cannot discern. We cannot discern things that are not of God. When we don't pray, we cannot overcome temptation. When we don't pray, we usually fail because guess what? We are not in the will of God and we are not respecting his authority. Many Christians are not praying today so they are not in the will of God and they are not respecting God's authority. It's a very sad thing to see that Pew report saying that only 68% of Christians pray daily. Call it what you may. Some religions people pray, always praying. Certain monks, they're locked away in their temples, they're always praying. The Muslim will go out and he'll pray five times per day. And Christians don't even want to pray for two seconds. We must pray. The scripture did not say that you're supposed to pray. You're supposed to pray 
50 times per day. It did not say you're supposed to pray 60 minutes each time. The scripture did not mandate the amount of time, the amount of days, etc., etc. But the scripture mandate that we must pray. So I say to you, it is a good habit to pray at least once per day. It is a very good habit to pray at least once per day. Very, very good habit. Okay? We pray at least once per day. Okay? When we don't pray before, or when we don't pray at least once per day, we're going to lose the battle. We are going to lose the battle. Because every day you leave your house, you're going into a battlefield. Every day you lose your house, the devil has new tricks. The devil does not rest. The devil does not sleep. So if you're a child of God and you decide, that, you know what, I'm not going to pray, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. Remember this, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. And I'm going to stop there. I'm going to start there. So if you don't pray, and prayer is the weapon that you have, how are you going to defeat the enemy? How are you going, how are we, how are you going, to, how are you going to invoke? How are you going to call on God? A lack of the prayer life is saying, we don't have any faith in God. A lack of the prayer life or no prayer life is saying that we don't, Want the will of God. A Christian without a prior life is saying that we do not respect your authority, God. Christians must pray. Praying should not be difficult to a Christian. Praying should be a second nature thing. Praying should be like breathing. Some people may pray long. You don't have to worry about praying long. Some people may shout. You don't have to worry about shouting. Some people may pray very frequently. You don't have to worry about, about how they're praying very frequently. Some people may get up at 3 a.m. and pray. You don't have to worry about getting up at 3 a.m. and pray. All you need to do is make sure you're in communication with God. Make sure that you are praying. Why should Christians pray? Because without prayer, you're saying you're not a practicing Christian. That's the bottom line. If you don't pray, you're not a practicing Christian. That is it. And that's one of the reasons... That's one of the reasons, you know, that's one of the reasons. Well, that's the, that's the reason many Christians are failing and falling by the wayside because they don't pray. So why should you pray as a Christian? You pray as a Christian because you're, you, you know that it's mandatory. You pray as a Christian because you're saying you want God's perfect will. You pray as a Christian because you're saying I'm submitting to his authority. So if you haven't been praying... Get on with it. Establish your prior life now. In Jesus' name, amen.